Okay, I did get some time to make the video for numbers 33 and 39 are the ones that you're going to probably have trouble with because um, we didn't get to do any of these kinds in class. Okay, so first of all, we got to ask ourselves, you know, it, 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 is there even a absolute extrema on this function for this interval? Well, as you guys know, this is just a number, so that doesn't really matter. Constant functions are always continuous. But this is an absolute value function. And absolute value functions, as you guys know, they look like a V-shape. But they don't really have any holes, jumps, or discontinuities in them, typically. Um, so this one, this one's not going to have any holes, jumps, or gaps. Absolute value functions are continuous. Okay, so we're good. We've got a continuous function. And we also have a closed interval, so we're going to go ahead and go through the process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative. The derivative of 3 is um, 0, so that just goes away. Now, I don't know if you guys remember how to find the derivative of an absolute value function. That negative in the front is just going to stay there. But the derivative of an absolute value function is you just take that function and put it on the bottom, and you put what's inside the absolute value on the top without absolute value bars. And then you also multiply it by the derivative of the inside. But in this case, the derivative of the inside is just 1. So there's our derivative. Okay. Um, so if you want to find out what makes a uh, derivative equal to 0, what you do is, is basically you set the top equal, or if you want to find out what makes a fraction equal to 0, is you set the top equal to 0. Okay. So... <clears throat> We get t minus 3 equals 0. That's going to give us 3. So there's that. Now there's a bit of a catch here. The bottom is also t minus 3, but it's in absolute value bars. I'm just going to ignore that for right now. We'll kind of address that in a minute. But there, there's one critical value. It's at 3. Now the other one is where y prime is undefined, right? It's undefined when the bottom is 0. So absolute value of 3 equals 0. Well, when you solve an absolute value equation, usually what you do is you split it up into two. You set one equal to the number over here, and you set the other one equal to a negative version of that. But since we're talking about zero, zero and negative zero are the same thing. So we really only need to do the one. And lo and behold, we get the same answer. So really, we only got one critical value out of this. It's t equals three. Okay. Um, now... We can't really say that t equals 3 is what makes the function equal 0, just so you know, because um, it's also what makes the function undefined. So really, it's, it's a point where we'd say it's undefined more so. So really, technically, to be technically right, it is undefined at t equals 3, but there is nowhere that it actually equals 0, because as soon as it tries to get to that point, um, we end up with something that's technically undefined. So just a minor detail, not a big deal for what we're talking about, but just thought we should mention it. All right, so we've got our candidates then. Our endpoints that we're interested in are negative 1 to 5, and we only got one candidate of a critical value, which is 3. And all you do is plug them in, and I'm pretty sure at that point you guys will have the rest of the, the problem just fine. Um, so if I plugged in negative 1, negative 1 take away 3 is negative 4. The absolute value of that would be 4. 3 take away 4 is negative 1, and so on. So I'll go ahead and finish this up. And as you can see, right there is where our minimum would be, and right there is where our max would be. Okay, so the detail here is basically in how do you find the derivative of an absolute value function. What makes a fraction equal to zero is when the top equals zero, and when the what makes it undefined is when the bottom equals zero. And in this case, since the top and bottom are kind of the same, the bottom overhauls the top so that really we don't have a place where it equals zero. We just have a place where <clears throat> it's undefined. But for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, let's go ahead and I'll do the next one with you guys, number 39. Um, you know, it's not that bad, actually. I think your only issue is going to be, you know, your your comp, your confidence with your trig stuff. So, number 39. Actually, I was going to do an example in class today that's a lot harder than this one, but 
we'll go ahead and do it. So first of all, is this continuous? Well, if you look at your sheet that I gave you earlier this year, cosine is always continuous. It has no holes, gaps, or jumps. And we're on a closed interval, so we're good to go. The extreme value theorem guarantees that, yes, there is an absolute max or min on this interval. Okay, so the first thing we do then is we find the derivative. The derivative of 3 cosine x, the 3 stays. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I'm going to go ahead and put the negative in front of the 3. We're going to set that equal to 0, and then we're going to solve. So divide both sides by negative 3, and you get this. And then we have to ask ourselves, where does sine of x equal 0? So in other words, on the unit circle, where does y equal 0? Because sine is the y value y equals 0 here and here, which are the values 0 and pi. Okay. The next thing we do is we want to find where is this thing undefined. Well, sine is never undefined. It's like cosine. It's continuous everywhere. So we're going to say there are no places where it's undefined. So we have two critical values that we're concerned with here. <clears throat> okay, candidates test. Um, endpoints. Critical values are 0 and pi. I've already got 0, so I just need to put pi in there. And from there, we just go ahead and solve things out. So if you plug 0 in here, cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 times 3 would be 3. If you plug in pi, cosine times pi is going to be negative 1, and negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi, well, it's the same thing as cosine of 0, which is 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. So we have a max. Now, this might be confusing to you because you're like, well, wait a minute, we've got two maxes. Well, you got to understand what they mean by max. <clears throat> What they mean when they say what's the absolute max is they mean what's the highest y value. So what's the answer? The highest y value is 3. It doesn't matter that there's two of them. They're both the same number. They're both 3. So the maximum value of this function is 3. The minimum, would, if that one's a little bit easier to understand, the absolute minimum would be negative 3. So there you guys go. Now, that's some trig stuff. Um, like I said, I was going to give you one that's a lot harder than that in class, and we might mess around with them a little bit later, but there you go.